So you want to come and visit the beautiful country that is New Zealand, Aotearoa. I've put together a 14 day road trip around New Zealand with lots of jam packed ideas. This trip could be tailored to be a little bit longer but it probably won't be any shorter. Hi I'm Emily and I run the YouTube channel Emily in NZ posting every Friday about our adventures living, working and exploring New Zealand. You can get a copy of this 14 day itinerary with Google Maps instructions and links as a downloadable PDF. Just join my Facebook community, an opportunity to chat with other people and the free download will be in there. I'll put a link in the description below. Any questions, feel free to put them in the Facebook group. If I can't answer them, people in the community will be able to. I look forward to helping you plan your road trip around New Zealand. Let's get started with this road trip. So it's likely you'll start your trip in Auckland, Tamaki Macau, Auckland. You'll come in at the airport and the airport isn't anywhere near the city centre. There's lots of buses, there is the SkyDrive bus and obviously there's taxis and Ubers. I suggest heading to Auckland city centre to Wynyard Quarter. Don't pick up your van yet. This means you won't have to pay for car parking in Auckland. Pick up your van after you've finished exploring Auckland. Staying in somewhere like Wynyard Quarter in one of the hotels is a lovely area right on the water. You can do a lot from Auckland. You can go up Sky Tower, a must. I also recommend getting the hop on hop off bus so you can get your bearings around the city, work out where you are and use it as your mode of transport to visit the different sites. It'll go as far out as Motat and Auckland Zoo and even over to the museum which is a completely free thing to do. You could also get a ferry from Queen's Wharf over to Devonport and you can explore the war tunnels not to mention the lovely cafe and restaurants that it's got on the front there. If you look at going further afield you might need to get a car or camper van heading up to the North Shore to explore Browns Bay, Takapuna or Torbay. Spending the day in Auckland is a great way to get started with your trip around New Zealand. Day two. Now you've had a day to explore Auckland, let's get on the road and make a start with our road trip. Picking up your camper van from a city centre location, you could get a taxi there, means you can get going and get packing for your road trip. Most camper vans will come prepared with knives and forks, cutlery, bedding, those kind of things, but you will need to stock up on your food. So head to Pack and Save. I've done a really good video about Pack and Save and why I think it's the best one to start with your bulk buying, but you could also go to New World or Countdown. I've done videos about those as well in my shop with me playlist. Top tip, get your fuel after you've done your shopping at Pack and Save because with that you'll get a fuel voucher. Use that fuel voucher to get a six cent discount on your fuel at the petrol station next door to the Pack and Save you went to. You cannot save them and use them for different places around the country and they're only valid for two weeks. So get your fuel straight away after you've done your shopping. Then. Let's head north up State Highway 1. I recommend taking the toll road, but you can take the alternative road around Oliwa and Waiwira. It depends how much time you've got. It's only a detour of probably half an hour and hug some beautiful beaches on the east coast or just get going on the toll road and head north up past Walkworth. A nice stop would be to stop at Waipu, at the Waipu Glowworm Caves. It's probably a 40 minute round trip off the main road, but it's completely free and an awesome thing to see glowworm caves on your drive up. Remember, it's about the journey, not the destination. You can also stop in Whangarei. Whangarei has a beautiful marina and the Huntervasa Museum. And if you really enjoyed the Huntervasa Museum, you must stop in Kawakawa. Kawakawa has the Huntervasa public toilets. Completely free, very unique set of toilets that are worth stopping at. By that point, you are nearly at your destination. And depending on how your days land, you could get the Kawakawa train. The Kawakawa train is a vintage train that goes through the middle of the town and you can check that out in this video here. We're heading towards Russell at the Bay of Islands. You can get the Opua car ferry which takes off about 40 minutes from your journey or you can go the long way round. I highly recommend getting the car ferry. It's really affordable and it runs every single day, pretty much every half an hour depending on the season and you just drive on, you don't need to book. First ferry is 6am in the morning and the last ferry is 10pm. I highly recommend staying at the Russell Top 10 Holiday Park. It's the only campsite in Russell so I recommend looking at the Russell top 10 holiday park for your accommodation tonight. Day three, exploring the Bay of Islands. You could spend a week exploring the Bay of Islands. In fact, we do and I've got a video about that here. But if you've only got a day, check out some of the wonderful places in Russell and Paihia. 
you can get the ferry over to Pahia. But what's cool is that you could leave your camper van at the campsite and you do not need to go back to it. You can jump on the passenger ferry from Russell to Pahia. Explore the cafes and the restaurants and the lovely little town that is Pahia. I also recommend you get a boat out to the Bay of Islands. Either Explore or Great Sites are the two companies. Head over to the information desk in Russell or Pahia to book a trip and check out the stunning Bay of Islands area. You could book a table at New Zealand's oldest pub, the Duke of Marlborough, right on the water in Russell. It is beautiful. It is also family friendly. Getting an earlier booking, you can take your children with you, but they're welcome anytime. There's a good kids menu. It's a little bit of history in New Zealand, as Russell was the first capital of New Zealand. In Russell, you could walk or drive around the corner to Long Beach. It's a very short drive, so you can still leave your camper van behind. Really lovely beach is a great chance on a nice sunny day. Couple of notes, if it's high season, so Christmas time, New Year, December, January, I recommend booking things like the boat and the restaurant well in advance. Any other time and you might be okay. If you really wanna do certain things, I do recommend doing your research first and seeing what you need to book. After exploring the Bay of Islands for a day, let's head back down south for the route that we came. But we're not gonna go all the way back to Auckland. We're gonna stop in the lovely town of Matakana. On your way down, I recommend going to the Waitangi Treaty Ground. Learn about the history of New Zealand and the signing of the Waitangi Treaty in 1840. This is a really important cultural trip that will educate you around the history and the culture of New Zealand. It's also children friendly and a great space for them to run around before getting in the car for the drive to Matakana. Just outside Waitangi Treaty Ground is Haruru Falls, a completely free waterfall that's well worth a stop and only five minutes walk from the car park. If you didn't do the Kawakawa train on your way up and the timetable falls where it's running on one of these days maybe you could do it on your way back down or stop at the toilets if you didn't go on the way yes i am going on about these toilets again Whangarei and Whangarei marina is a lovely place to stop on your way down matakana is a really lovely place to stay there's two campsites Whangatiao and sandspit if your trip happens to land on a Saturday, they also have the market where they sell a lot of local produce and lovely coffee. You could also pop to Matakana Stables where they have a little train ride that runs on a Saturday. Other days of the week, you can go to the Reptile Park, pop to Goat Island, but don't expect to find any goats. It's a marine reserve. There's also Sheep World, great chance to learn about sheep shearing and a wonderful place for all the family. And there's even vineyards in the area as well. We love the area so much. We visit three or four times a year as it's nice and close to Auckland for us and we go for long weekends. Day five. Now we're heading to Rotorua, the geothermal town, via Matamata, or sometimes known as Hobbiton. If you've heard of The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings, or even if you haven't, I'm not sure where you've been, Hobbiton is well worth a visit. It is the set of The Hobbit with lots of Lord of the Rings themed areas. It is very family friendly. At busy times you will need to book as you have to book a tour to be able to go at a set time. On your way to Matamata there's these really cool gardens in Hamilton. They're very very unique. It's less about the gardening and more about the sets. You can be in Egypt, you could be in a Chinese garden, you could be in an English Tudor garden. They are really unique and a wonderful place to stretch your legs on your drive and completely free. On your way you could do the opposite, instead of going to Hamilton you could head up to Waihi and you could stop at some of the gold mines. Karangahaki Gorge is a really nice place to go for a walk and stretch your legs. Somewhere we really explored when we spent a weekend in Matamata and had some great hikes with the kids. Once you get into Rotorua after that busy day, you'll want to stay at the multiple campsites that there is available. There is All Seasons Campsite, which is the dinosaur campsite that we often go to. There's Cozy Cottage, Rotorua Holiday Park. There's also the Blue Lake Top 10. I talk about the top 10 franchise campsites in this video. I will note the Blue Lake Top 10 Holiday Park isn't in the town of Rotorua, it is on the outskirts, but it's still a beautiful location to be, but you're not walkable to any of the main Rotorua cafes and restaurants, whereas the Rotorua Thermal Holiday Park is a bit closer in town. Day six, spend the day exploring Rotorua you could spend a week here as well. There's a lot of free things that you can do. I've done a video here about free geothermal and where to find them. In that video, I talk about Kerrison Creek, a hot waterfall river, which you can paddle in and sit under a waterfall completely free. Whilst it's not free, Waiatepu Thermal Wonderland is well worth a visit. It is my favorite geothermal park 
in Rotorua featuring the Champagne Lake, the most photographed area in Rotorua. Kairua Park is a completely free geothermal park in the centre of Rotorua and is well worth a visit. The Redwoods treetop walk is so cool. Take the family, you go across suspension bridges, working your way to little platforms. It is completely safe and it's even pushchair friendly, although you have to hire a special pushchair that's included in the price of your ticket. It's pretty cool, our kids really enjoyed it. And make sure to pop up the Skyline Gondola and Luge and have an awesome ride on a tea tray really fast down the mountain. And if you want to see a dormant volcano, head to Lake Tarawera. Just outside Rotorua is a gorgeous lake with a very prominent volcano at the end. It erupted in 1866 and something also completely free is a Kerry Falls. A nice walk for the family. Whitewater rafters come over the top of this waterfall and it's really cool to watch. Also, as you carry on your walk, you go into these little caves where you'll see wetters, a New Zealand native animal, and you might see the odd glowworm as well. You might struggle to get all of this into one day, so you might have to pick and choose what you want to do or start really early and finish really late because it's an awesome place to visit, especially for the family. After that busy day of exploring, it's time to hit the road. We're going to head to Wellington. Bit of a road trip today, quite a bit of driving, and not so many stops as previous days. But you should certainly stop at New Zealand's biggest lake, Lake Topoa. It is a volcano crater, and you can't miss it. It is the hole in the middle of Te Ika Ao Maui, the North Island. If you want to see more geothermal, head to Spa Park in Topoa, another free area that I mentioned in my geothermal video, where you can have a paddle in the geothermal waters on the edges of the River Waikato. As you work your way down the Lake Topoa, you'll start seeing Tongarero National Park. If it's a clear day, you'll be able to make out Rupeo, Nagarahoe and Tongarero. We went up Rupeo in this video and it was an awesome day in the snow. So hopefully you have a clear day as you drive past. On this road trip, we won't be going over to the snow. We'll be seeing the volcano from a distance, but you could take an additional day and head over to the snow. As you work your way south, it's well worth stopping at Wairua. This is the National Army Museum. There's a nice cafe and an interesting museum about the New Zealand Army history. And then start traveling across country down to the Kapiti Coast. See the Kapiti Island on your right hand side as you work down State Highway 1 and head into Wellington. Once you're in Wellington, there aren't that many campsites. There is the Wellington Top 10 Holiday Park, which is okay, but I recommend get a hotel or a motel with car parking, leave the camper van in the car park and enjoy the luxuries of being in a city centre hotel again. After all that driving yesterday, we're going to have a day to explore Wellington. You can do this on foot, you can do it in your camper van, or you can jump in and out of Ubers or taxis. The Wellington Cable Car or the Funicular Railway is well worth a look, especially to check out the views. This takes you up to the Wellington Botanic Gardens and the Observatory, which has some amazing views at night time for the clear sky and obviously looking out across the beautiful vista that is Wellington. Lots of boutique cafes and restaurants. It's really known for its food and drink. Make sure you check out the Beehive Parliament Building, a very distinctive building for the government. Te Papa Tongariwa is the New Zealand National Museum. It is completely free. It is in Wellington, it is walkable around the city and it's well worth a visit to take in that culture and the history that is Aotearoa, New Zealand. A little bit further out of town is Marama which is where the Weta workshop is and the Weta cave, but where they develop movies like Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and quite a few other movies you might recognise. Really interesting to look behind the scenes, seeing how they make a lot of the models, how they do a lot of the shots and the sets. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, do jump in a taxi or an Uber or take your camper van out to the Weta workshop. And if you're feeling in the mood for a walk, head up Mount Victoria for the panoramic views around Wellington. Day nine. We're going to say goodbye to the North Island and hello to the South Island. We're going to get a ferry from Wellington to Picton. And really, there's no driving here at all. It's a very short 10 minute drive to the ferry terminal from Wellington City and then let the ferry do the driving. Drive your car on to a Blue Bridge or Inter Islander and I highly recommend booking this in advance. In fact, book this before you come into the country as they can be quite limited but you can get a very refundable booking where you could flex and move it. So have a booking in the first place. We use Inter Islander, but we can also recommend Bluebridge. And there's a couple of different options with the Inter Islander, some good ones for children. If you manage to get the Kaitiaki boat, they have a huge play area for the children to keep them occupied for the four hour crossing. It's a stunning ride through the Cook Strait and into the Marlborough Sounds. And you'll feel like you're on a cruise for the majority of this trip. Once you arrive into Picton, you can drive off and explore the foreshore. 
Books on where to stay in Picton. I recommend the Tasman Holiday Park as a great place to stay, a little bit outside of town. So you could walk at a push, but you might want to drive into the Picton area. It is a quaint little sea village. You also have Picton Campervan Park, the Picton Holiday Park, and the Waikawa Bay Holiday Park. You can explore the sounds from here. You can get a boat to Loch Mara Lodge for a day trip a fantastic place it's even got accommodation if you wanted to leave the camper van on the main island and head out into the sounds you've got the queen charlotte track which is an amazing walk that lasts for days so maybe not just for one night but a great place to start your south island trip so the next day day 10 we're going to drive south of picton to hamner springs you've got two options here you could go either following the east coast via kaikoura and you can view whales going on a whale watch tour and stop to see the seals or you can go inland via Saint Arnaud a more alpine route getting that famous photo on Lake Rotoriti Jetty and you can paddleboard or swim at Lake Rotorua note the pronunciation of Rotorua not Rotorua where we went to previously on our trip either way you're going to end up at the geothermal town of Hamner Springs nestled in the mountains of the South Island you'll notice a real change in the outlook between the South and the North Islands with a fantastic geothermal water park which is well worth a visit which has just been upgraded for more family friendly featuring water slides and a campsite nearby i recommend staying at the top 10 hamner springs holiday park i can also recommend the pines holiday park as one nearby as well just a reminder you can download all of this trip as a pdf by heading over to my facebook community and getting your free download the facebook community is called exploring new zealand i'll put a link in the description below you can join me and other people who are planning their road trip or have done their road trip around new zealand and get your free download now leaving hamner springs hopefully you had a wonderful relax in the hamner springs geothermal pool we're heading to lake tekapo this drive just gets more beautiful as the day goes on just a note you'll often find the driving times for this area of the south island can be a little bit more than google maps says we've penciled in four hours and 21 minutes precisely because that's what google maps says but i would consider it more of a five hour drive obviously plan some wonderful stops in your your day because it's all about the journey and not the destination today you'll stop in the city of christchurch well worth visiting the beautiful garden city you can visit botanic garden visit some art galleries go to the antarctic center or visit the earthquake center on your way out of christchurch stop at wakaya gorge really stunning view on your drive you can't miss it well worth pulling over to take a photo as your day of driving goes on there's a lovely little town called geraldine which is well worth stopping for a visit some lovely cafes there nice place to stretch your legs as you're heading inland at the south island once you're in lake tekapo you are in a dark sky area the observatory is amazing also that all-important photo of the church of good shepherd with the beautiful sky i hope you're there on a clear day there isn't too much choice to stay in the lake tekapo area there's the lakes edge holiday park which is where we stay and i highly recommend a bit further afield is the glentana holiday park which is a good distance from tekapo but also close to mount cook but also there's quite a few airbnbs in the area today we are going to head to queenstown it is day 12 plenty of stops today so many beautiful things to see it's a three to four hour journey and you could start your day by heading over to mount cook if you're staying at the Glen Tanner Holiday Park, you're already halfway there. If you're at Lake Tekapo, head to Lake Pukaki, which you go past anyway. If it's clear, go for it. Take a look at the mountain. Only one in three days a year is the mountain clear. It's still worth driving to the mountain. It's about 45 minutes from Lake Pukaki because there's the Hooker Valley Loop Walk, which is a lovely low level walk which you can do in that area as well as tasman glacier which is a 20 minute walk from the car park to see glaciers in a lake after you've been looking at the snow continue your drive and you could head to the omarama hot tubs quaint little hot tubs you can actually camp there and look at the night sky if you want to add this onto your schedule not a huge place for family or for splashing about but a nice relaxing area to warm up on your journey round the corner from omarama is the clay cliffs really unique geological structures which are well worth a visit and only 10 minutes from the car park resuming your journey down state highway 8 we are going across the lindas pass towards cromwell which has some unusual fruit 
you'll see what I mean. There's these fruit structures that are worth stopping just to look at as the unusual shapes that they are. As you get closer to Queenstown, make sure you stop at the Kaiwarua Gorge Suspension Bridge. This was where bungee jumping was invented. If you don't fancy jumping off yourself, you can watch the crazy people jumping off the bridge with a piece of elastic attached to their ankles. Once you arrive into Queenstown, you're in the adventure capital of New Zealand. There's lots of choice for campsites and accommodation here. I do recommend, again, the top 10 Queenstown. I'm a big fan of the top 10 campsites and have done a video here. There's lots to do when you get into Queenstown. You could go jet boating on the shoot over jet. You could go to an ice bar. I highly recommend you get the TSS Earnslaw steamship over the lake, heading over to the farm on the other side for a cultural tour, as well as a bit of history around the area. Like we did in Rotorua, there's the skyline gondola with a luge, giving you panoramic views of Queenstown and coming down the luge. You can head over to Cardrona and check out the bra wall at Cardrona Pass. Yep, I said a bra wall. And from here, if you haven't managed to do the West Coast and you want to see the glaciers, this could be a good place to fly over to the West Coast to view the glaciers. It's quite a long drive back over the Lindis Pass to get to Fox and Franz Josef Glacier, but I will put this in as an optional extra. We're nearly at the end of your trip, but you must finish on a high. Day 13, Milford Sound. Absolutely stunning area that is well worth a visit. But you've got a few options because it is quite a long drive. Option one is you leave Queenstown and you self-drive and it is five hours each way. So that is 10 hours of driving. When you get there, I highly recommend you book a boat and you travel through the sound. All of this you can do within one very long day. Option two is to book a round trip tour, a bus tour from Queenstown, taking a bus and have the driving done for you. You will also get a boat when you get there. Option three, very exciting, and I did this over 10 years ago in the winter, is to fly. Fly from Queenstown into Milford Sound, get a stunning tour over the mountains to go and see Milford Sound. You will land at the little airport there and you'll also get a boat through the sounds. Or option four, you could do a mixture. You could get a bus and then you could fly back or the other way around. Depending on your budget and your time, it's a stunning place that's worth seeing. Once you get there though, you must get a boat. Looking at it from the shore just won't do it justice. It's pretty stunning. But once you go in there, you've got the beautiful waterfalls that the boat goes up to. There are multiple cruise companies that you can book with. I do recommend booking your cruise in advance. If it's a particularly quiet day, you could get there and book it at the information center and see what space they've got. But as you'll see from these options, time might be a challenge with you traveling there and back. So I recommend booking a cruise time that works for you online. There is a campsite at Milford Sound. There's only the one and it gets very, very booked up. So you will need to pre-book. So you could drive one day, stay overnight, explore, get a boat and drive back. We did this a few years ago. I'll warn you, it's one area for a lot of sand flies. Check out my video here about the dangerous animals of New Zealand. One of them is sand flies. So you've had a fantastic trip around New Zealand. It is now day 14 and I recommend flying out of Queenstown. You can fly out of Queenstown directly to Australia. Other areas you will need to change at Auckland and leaving your camper van at a depot in Queenstown. Check out my downloadable PDF. There's a lot of links in there and things to help you with bookings and videos to help you with your planning. There is also some additional days. So if you've got three or four weeks or even five weeks to do your trip, there's some fantastic things I recommend doing that will really enhance your trip. This trip can be done as is over three weeks, staying a little bit longer in some of those key areas. I hope you find that helpful as the must things to do on your road trip around New Zealand. Thank you. I am Emily in NZ and I post every Friday about what it's like to live, work and explore in New Zealand. So hit subscribe so you get updated about the next video. I'll see you in my next video.